Hello everyone. In the last lesson of the course Environmental Management System, we had discussion about the elements of Environmental Management System standard that is ISO 14001-2015. These elements or the clauses or the requirements of this ISO 14001-2015 standard are based on famous and well known PDCA approach. So, this lesson is been designed with an objective to understand the PDCA approach or the model which is used which is used which is used for the implementation of environmental management system. So, in this presentation, we are going to discuss the PDCA approach which is followed for any type of activity for having improvement in the performance. And we are going to discuss how this PDCA model is followed in ISO 14001-2015. The PDCA approach was invented in 1950 by Dr. Edward Deming. He was known to be a quality guru in his field. If we want to enhance the performance of any activity, we can use this approach and we are able to improve the performance over a period of time. This PDCA approach consists of four elements. Those are, first one is plan, then it's the do part, then a checking and fourth one is act part. Now, how this approach can be used for any activity like any day to day activity we are performing, we can follow this PDCA approach and we are able to enhance the performance in that activity. Let us take an example. Suppose you are undergoing a course which is numerical based. Whenever we are performing any activity, it needs to be objective oriented. In order to enhance the performance, the objectives and relative target need to be set for that activity. So, let us consider for appearing for that course and its examination, you have got objective to score first class performance or first class marks in that course. So, how are you able to score the first class marks in that particular course by using this PDCA approach? So, in the first stage of planning, you decide about the preparation plan for that course. So, suppose you are going to appear for an examination. So, you decide about the timeline which is to be given for its preparation. If you consider two days or three days preparation is necessary for that course. So, the time is decided. Now, it is necessary to decide about the references. So, the time is decided as 3 days and the references which will be used for the preparation of that course. So, you may decide about the different books, the notes which are to be referred and any other material 
to be used for the preparation of that course. If that course consists of six units, then again you can decide the time distribution for the preparation of those respective units. So, this becomes the planning for the process or this activity of appearing the examination and scoring the first class performance. So, with reference to this plan, suppose you appear for the examination that you carry out the preparation with reference to these timeline, with reference to these references and you appear for the examination. Now, in this implementation part or do part, you may come across some of the constraints because of which the entire planning may not be executed. So, such constraints need to be recorded, need to be found out and in future, if you want to improve the further performance, we are able to use that. So, after implementation, it need to be checked whether really the required performance is obtained. So, after appearing for the examination, its results are declared and the result will declare whether the required performance is been achieved or not. Suppose you score the first class performance in this particular course, then we can say whatever planning was been done that was been executed as per the requirement and the required performance is achieved. If the second case, you are not scored the required performance in this course, then in this checking process itself, one need to identify what are the root causes for not achieving the required performance. So, under this checking process, we can use the different tools such as we can find it out whether the timeline which was decided, the time resource which was given, was it sufficient or not? The references which were used, were they sufficient or not? Or any other references were to be used? Such things we are able to identify in this checking process. So, checking process is basically the evaluation process of your planning, how it was being executed, how the resources were used. So, once we are identifying the root cause or the reasons for not achieving the required objective, those are identified and those are worked out in this act phase. So, suppose you are appearing for similar type of subject in the next semester you can use this plan or the improved plan and you can try out again to score for the first class performance. So, in this way, you are able to improve the performance. As we are able to see, it is a closed cycle. So, after the act part, again it connects with the planning. So, if the required performance is obtained, then we can think of some other areas for improving the performance in a particular system. So, this is the in general PDCA approach which is followed for any activity. Now, let us see how this PDCA approach is been used in the standard ISO 14001 2015 for the implementation of environmental management system. So, as we are able to see here, the four elements are being specified as planning. Then, under the do part, the second stage, the elements are being given as support and operation. In the third part, the checking phase, the requirements are being given as performance evaluation. And the act part, the requirements are specified as improvement. So, it is a closed loop, a closed cycle. As we can see, for any organization, the involvement of top management is very essential and 
environmental management system as per ISO 14001 expects the involvement of top management in all the phases. Hence, in this cycle, the leadership is being mentioned at the central part. Then, this specifies the boundary of the organization, which gives the physical features of that organization. So, it may include the different units, functions, processes, which are performed for that organization and which are being considered under the scope of environmental management system. In addition to these physical features, its processes and all these uh, necessary requirements, we need to consider the internal and external issues to the environmental management system. It basically covers the different factors, the environmental conditions which can affect the performance of organizations towards environmental management. In addition to that, for an organization, it need to consider the needs and expectations of the interested parties. So, together of these internal and external issues, needs and expectations of the interested parties and the physical features, the functions and the processes of the organization, it becomes the context of organization. So, context of organization specifies basically the area or the scope of environmental management system. So, this is how the PDCA model is being followed in ISO 14001-2015 for the implementation of 2015 for the implementation of environmental management system, stand, uh, system with reference to ISO 14001-2015 standard. Thank you very much for this session.